As our first speaker, we have Dr. Vijaya Das. I would request her to come on to the podium. Dr. Vijaya Das is an associate professor in the Department of Physiology at MS Ramaya Hospital, uh, Medical College, sorry. He's completed his graduation and post-graduation in MD Physiology from Ramaya, which he finished in 2008. He is a part of the physiology uh, department, which I uh, re just learned runs a very nice autonomic nervous system lab, where they have a detailed evaluation of the autonomic nervous system uh, for any patient. In addition to that, he has been an examiner for MBBS, BDS, and BPT in the Rajiv Gandhi University. He has had several publications in national and international journal, and he has a special interest in pain physiology, as well as endocrinology and autonomic nervous system, and of course, with medical education. Over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Good morning to all of you. Thank you very much uh, to Chandra, especially to Dr. Chandrasekhar, sir. He is my guru, teacher, mentor. Uh, I worked under Dr. Chandrasekhar. Uh, so, I am going to start the topic. Uh, I started with this slide. Uh, initially, I have changed this uh, slide after coming here because my first slide is uh, pain. So, I don't want to show the pain first. I just wanted to show that there is a relief for pain, every pain, especially in this particular uh, gathering. Distinguished clinicians are there. They are uh, able to relieve the pain. So, I'll, uh, with the relief of that pain, I will start the physiology of pain. The topic uh, given to me is the physiology of pain from origin to perception. Uh, before I start uh, actual physiology, I just wanted to say why I am interested in physiology. The first thing is, it's my dissertation topic in my uh, MD and uh, is interested. The reason why I am interested is, I worked in Nimhans for about one year as a junior resident. That time I was not very keen on the uh, physiology aspect or clinical aspect, but I was seeing one patient, uh, still I remember patient name is uh, Shrestha Sharma, uh, she is a North Indian, she was suffering from lot of pain, she was there in the hospital for more than 6 months only for pain and uh, uh, the actual diagnosis could not happen, but still she was on treatment intermittently. So that made me to do something for uh, something to understand and give relief for pain. So then when I came for MD Physiology, then uh, I told my guide that I wanted to work on pain. Then uh, my madam, Dr. Rupkala told uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar is the best person who can uh, help you in this. So I worked under uh, sir. Thank you very much sir for giving me that opportunity. So pain is one of the more nature's earliest indications of morbidity. Any, any problems, the first thing is pain. And uh, musculoskeletal pain is among the most uh, common reasons uh, that patients seek medical care. And this pain word has originated from Latin, that's meaning punishment. And in 17th century, Descartes has given a detailed description how that pain conducts from periphery to the uh, uh, CNS. So that was the first plausible theory on pain. I'm going to touch mainly on the basic aspects of uh, uh, physiology. Uh, let us see when it's, uh, it goes beyond that, if possible, if I am able to explain that. The Taxonomy Committee of International Association of Study of Pain, IASP, has chaired by uh, Mursky in 1979. They defined pain as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. It was a definition which was given by IASP. But later they added one crucial sentence that pain is always a subjective one. Pain can be composed of uh, three hierarchical levels, uh, sensory, motivational and cognitive levels. Sensory is mainly on descriptive components like where exactly it is located, what is the intensity, what is the quality of pain. And motivational aspect is uh, mainly affective component that includes any emotional disturbances and cognitive component involves evaluative component that is concerning with the cause and significance of the pain for particular problem. The first thing uh, in physiology we starts with receptors. These pain receptors, uh, receptors are uh, mainly nociceptors. That nociceptor, uh, nocer means uh, hurt in Latin. And this pain due to either damage or capable of damaging the stimuli, these 
stimuli are called noxious stimuli because they hurt and they are detected by specific sensory receptors called nociceptors and they are nothing but the free nerve endings which are spread all over they are spread mainly over the skin in internal tissues like uh, periosteum arterial walls joint surfaces and fox and tintorium in the cranial vault the deeper tissues also have uh, nociceptors but they are less in number and any of uh, these numbers summation of these many receptors may lead to a damage which may lead to a chronic aching type of pain first now we have understood the receptors then next how it gets stimulated pain can be elicited by mechanical thermal and chemical stimuli and some of these chemicals that excite the pain are bradykinin serotonin histamine potassium ions acids acetylcholine proteolytic enzymes etc in addition i we know that prostaglandin inhibitors will decrease the pain but uh, prostaglandins and substance p will actually enhance the sensitivity to the pain instead of just stimulating the uh, pain as such uh, they uh, stays increase the sensitivity of pain endings but do not exactly or directly excite the pain these nociceptors as i told you already they are nothing but the free nerve endings mainly of our, according to erlanger gasser classification we have a b c and in a myelinated a and b are myelinated nerve fibers c is unmyelinated fibers in that group a delta fibers and they are myelinated and c fibers unmyelinated fibers so these are the uh, nerve fibers which will carry the pain sensation the nerve endings of these are the nociceptors they have cell bodies in the dorsal root ganglia and terminate in superficial layers of the dorsal horn of the spinal cord in the spinal cord they relay messages by releasing neurotransmitters mainly glutamate substance p and calcitonin gene related peptide cgrp on entering the spinal cord the pain signals take two pathways to the brain those two pathways are one is neospinothalamic tract the other one is paleospinothalamic tract spinothalamic tract from spinal cord to the thalamus and before that also there is a first order then third order neurons will continue so this is the picture where in the spinal cord you have two fibers you can see the c and a delta a delta is mainly they carry sharp fast kind of pain sensations and c fibers will carry a chronic dull aching kind of pain sensation and they have a entry is same but in the Uh, spinal cord there is a change where there is a some will end in a particular lamina some will end in a different lamina there are some interneurons in between then they cross to the opposite side neo spinothalamic tract uh, as i told you uh, it's a fast type of a delta fibers they transmit mainly mechanical and acute thermal pain they terminate mainly in lamina 1 as i mentioned in the previous slide of the dorsal horns these uh, uh, fibers they excite the second order neurons of the neuro, uh, neospinothalamic tract and they give rise to long fibers that cross see here they cross to the opposite side so contralaterally they go so they cross immediately to the opposite side of the cord through the anterior commissure and then they turn upward uh, and uh, move into the anterior lateral columns a few fibers of neospinothalamic tract terminate in reticular areas of the brain stem but most of them will pass all the way to the thalamus without interruption and they terminate in ventro basal complex so there is a thalamus area so there is a fast pain fibers they go to the ventro basal complex i didn't go exactly the uh, uh, where exactly in the thalamus ventro basal area but this is a area exactly few fibers also terminate in posterior nuclear group of 
the thalamus. From these thalamic areas, the signals are transmitted to other basal areas of the brain as well as to the somatosensory cortex. The other picture, this is related to slow pain fibers that is C, I will tell you in the next pathway. So, this is the, I think you remember uh, uh, from your MBBS days. So, this is the uh, sensory homunculus and you can see the area, somatosensory area, where th these different uh, parts of the body represent exactly where that particular area sensation goes to the part in the cerebral cortex. Then the second one is paleospinothalamic tract pathway. This pathway transmits pain mainly from peripheral slow chronic C fibers. These fibers terminate in the spinal cord almost entirely in lamina 2 and 3 of dorsal horns which together are called substantia gelatinosa. Most of the signals then pass through one more additional short fiber neurons within the dorsal horns themselves before entering into lamina 5 and in lamina 5 the last neurons in this series give rise to long axons that mostly join the fibers of the fast pain pathway that is the neospinothalamic pathway. Passing first through the anterior commissure uh, to the opposite side of the spinal cord then upward similar to the earlier pathway. And the little difference here from the neospinothalamic tract is only one tenth to one fourth of the fibers pass all the way to the thalamus, but rest of them will terminate nearby. Uh, the area in around it. subcortical perception is a main important thing here. So, uh, reticular nuclei they end in three areas mainly the reticular areas of the medulla, pons, mesencephalon, tectal areas of mesencephalon, deep to superior and inferior colli, and periacrodectal gray area region surrounding the aqueduct of Sylvius. And these lower regions of the brain are they are important for mainly the feeling of suffering kind of a pain. So, they have an, an uh, interneurons there, they go upward to the intralaminar and uh, ventrolateral nuclei in the thalamus and they go to the hypothalamus. That is why there is a component of uh, other emotional components are associated with pain. The third order neurons when activated they pass the pain signals to the somatosensory areas which allows for the perception of pain. And the neural processing of pain signal is the same thing as I already explained, I will just uh, pass through. The transduction, transmission and modulation are involved. The transduction is same like uh, as I told you nociceptor uh, afferent fibers, uh, they have they are mainly the pseudo unipolar neurons with the peripheral uh, terminal and uh, central terminal and the neurotransmitters are released on both ends and uh, participate in producing the pain signals. And they have an uh, axon reflex in the local area and there are some sleeping or silent receptors, nociceptors. Whenever there is a tissue injury, they get stimulated and once they are activated, these nociceptors fire persistently and they are sensitized and they eat this sensation lead to hyperalgesia, increased pain sensation. And sometimes uh, non-noxious stimuli also produce a pain that is called allodynia. The transmission is uh, the pathway which I mentioned. I just wanted to mention here that there are C fibers which have a uh, decreased velocity and they are uh, thick, uh, thinner in size and they are polymodal. That means they, uh, they get stimulated by mechanical, thermal and chemical stimuli. And uh, the A delta fibers uh, conduct fa uh, faster compared to the C fibers and they are mainly uh, high threshold mechanoceptors and they also respond to the thermal sensation also and they go to the uh, sensory cortex finally. And the neurotransmitter as I mentioned earlier uh, mainly glutamate uh, through the NMDA type of receptors they act and uh, substance P which increases the sensitize, uh, sensitize the pain is also involved. And modulation of pain is one of the important thing which is different from the other uh, uh, pathways, sensory pathways. This is uh, mainly through endogenous uh, opioid mechanism and descending neural tract. And uh, this endogenous opioid mechanism, uh, it has been found that there are uh, uh, mu delta kappa receptors and they have a, these receptors 
have a blocking capacity uh, which inhibit uh, the neurotransmitter glutamate and they decrease the pain sensation. There is a serotonergic neuron, they stimulate this uh, enkephrin endorphin uh, neurons and they decrease the pain sensation. There is a gate control theory by Melzack and Wall they proposed and uh, it, it talks about the neuronal plasticity which is happening with the pain sensation. And uh, coming to the actual uh, apart from the, uh, the basic physiology, uh, the, the related to inflammation and pain how exactly it can happen. Uh, inflammation and pain, when skin or internal tissue are damaged, variety of substances are released, sometimes they are called inflammatory soup and that includes glutamate, serotonin, adenosine, ATP, substance P, bradykinin, prostaglandin, cytokines, chemokines, some ions like potassium ions, hydrogen ions, neutro neurotrophins, etc. They all together may or sometimes few chemicals may trigger the inflammation. And development of central sensitization is one of the most important thing which leads to the uh, pain inflammation, uh, uh, pain after the inflammation. And some of these chemicals can also modulate the excitatory, uh, excitability of the nociceptors making them more sensitive. For example, bradycanin which directly depolarize the nociceptors and also stimulate long lasting intracellular changes that make the channels more sensitive. Prostaglandins generated by enzymatic breakdown of uh, lipid membrane increase, the, increase greatly the sensitivity of nociceptors and other, uh, other things which leads to uh, pain stimulation and substance P which causes vasodilatation and release of histamine from mast cells which really, uh, helps in the hyperalgesia and pain during inflammation. And like this uh, movement related uh, pain in arthritis and uh, uh, herpetic pain, they are also involved in allodynia and that is how the, there is a pain sensation can happen. And the tissue injury can lead to a local changes inflammatory uh, soup again as I told you that may also lead to pain sensation. And uh, role of cytokines uh, in the inflammatory pain, cytokines uh, I think uh, Sir uh, will talk about the cytokines in, uh, in detail. The cytokines are also involved in the pain sensation and the cytokines may directly uh, act on the nociceptors which release the agents uh, such as prostaglandins. In acute inflammation, uh, they in induce a sensitization via receptor associated uh, kinases and chronic inflammation transcriptional change can happen upregulation that leads to pain. And there are some experimental evidences which uh, says that there is a pain exactly occurs in this particular way. Like pro-inflammatory cytokines which includes tumor necrosis factor alpha uh, which uh, uh, interleukin 1, 6, 8 all those are experimentally when they inject they increase the pain hyperalgesia. And neurotrophic growth factor also have a uh, effect on the inflammation and the pain. And um, there are uh, venylide receptors, we are one, so capsaicin receptors are there, they are also involved in the uh, pain sensation which is uh, because of the acidic environment within the inflamed tissues. The responses to ATP are also enhanced in the inflammation during some of the experimental models. So the overall any pain because of the injury, tissue injury, nerve injury or inflammation, there are so many things. Uh, uh, this inflammatory markers, uh, cytokines, chemokines, uh, all those things are involved and ultimately they stimulate the sensory neuron endings, free nerve endings and the final pathway is same uh, neospinothalamic and paleospinothalamic pathway. And the muscle pain is slightly different from actual muscle pain is slightly different from the uh, these uh, pain pathways and it is uh, uh, mainly which pain seen in the rheumatology practice and sports medicine. And it is uh, mainly the, the may not the exactly the muscle. It's mainly the the fascia which is there, which which have more uh, uh, these receptors, which leads to pain because they uh, accumulate the, some of the unwanted metabolites like uh, potassium ions and bradykin, which leads to pain sensation. And the pain due to ischemia is also one of the important things. The re recent findings is ischemia pain is mainly because of uh, the sensation of uh, uh, the sensory neurons get stimulated, metaboreceptors will be there, they get excited, they stimulate the nerve endings there and ultimately they create an environment where the acidic uh, 
sensitive ion channels get opened up and that leads to a pain sensation. So, overall uh, uh, the pain physiology is very important to under understand the pathophysiology of any of the inflammatory diseases and musculoskeletal pain. So, this is the basics of a physiology. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you Vijay Das sir uh, for an excellent review of uh, pain physiology. I think we have time for questions. Uh, if anybody wants to ask a question. So, I uh, will start off sir, you had told about uh, the mechanism of hyperalgesia, uh, but is there any, uh, what is our understanding about the mechanism for allodynia? Are there any uh, ke like chemicals or new, uh, which are involved in the uh, uh, principle of allodynia? Sir, allodynia is mainly uh, the non-noxious stimuli which leads to innocuous stimuli leads to pain. Mainly the central sensitization is the main important uh, physiology behind that. Once they are get sensitized, even the mild touch can lead to exaggerated sensation. Hyperalgesia is mainly the uh, nociceptive stimulation only, but here it is not a nociceptive stimulation. Any other uh, tactile stimulation also leads to, it is again because of the uh, mechanism leads to central sensitization which leads to pain sensation. So, okay. allodynia has a central origin. Yes, yes. Any questions? So, I guess we will move on with this session. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.